In terms of chapter two, we think a little bit more about learning with video games. And what we're talking about here is we're thinking about how can we use video games, a whole variety of different video games, to develop different aspects of the curriculum. And we've split this section up into a number of different parts. And the first thing that we look at in this section is how can we use video games to improve language you know, and literacy? And when we look at this particular section, we think about how might we use things like narrative driven video games in order to improve reading? Or how might we use games like scribble noughts that you can see on the screen here to include it to include things like vocabulary, the different names of, from words to also coincide that with problem solving ability. We also talk a little bit about some types of games that are available um, to help encourage reading traditional texts but the hook initially you know is using the video game and examples of that for example include games like knights on bikes and also beast quest within this section as well it's not just improving literacy in terms of english or the language that you speak in your country it's also about how can we use video games um you know and, and gamified gamified software to learn a different language compared to your own and within that part of the handbook, we start to look at some of different different apps and things that are available, including apps that are popular for the mobile phone and for the computer that are highly gamified. And these are tools like Duolingo, FluentU and Babbel. And most importantly, we give some top tips about how these might be used in the classroom or as home learning activities to encourage pupils to engage with them. We also within this section, uh, look at numeracy and cognitive games. We think that there's a huge amount of potential to use certain types of, of, of video games to develop both numeracy and cognitive ability. One of the most famous games that we look at is Dr. Kawashima's Brain Training, which is available for the Nintendo Switch. But we also look at other apps and software that's available, such as Peak Brain, Brain Training, Elevate and Cognito. And just like with the literacy and numeracy games, we give examples about how these games can be used in the classroom in order to get maximum impact. So, for example, what we know about these types of numeracy games is that regular practice is quite important. Normally, that regular practice should last about six weeks or for over, over the period of, 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 of a term. And actually, that regular practice should be done in short, intensive blocks, say 15 minutes a day or 30 minutes once or twice a week. And again, in the handbook, we look, we link back to evidence um, and other examples about how these things can be used in practice. Uh, we've also this year, uh, as part of the handbook, uh, started to look a little bit more around movement and physical games. These are games, frankly, that are designed to make you sweat. They're designed to get your heart rate going. We think they're good for your health and well-being, in particular, your physical health and well-being. Um, and these types of games include uh, dance games um, or rhythm games, but we also spend a little bit of time as well looking at gamified apps such as Google Fit, Apple Fitness and Strava and how we've got different gamified software included within this. And also games that you know, we think are designed to really get you, get you outside and to explore the world and get you looking at the world in different ways. And these types of games for mobiles in particular include games like Pokemon Go uh, and Jurassic World Alive. These are augmented reality experiences where you're trying to discover Pokemon uh, and dinosaurs respectively. And these are just a couple of the games that we mentioned within this section. Now, completely new for this version of the MOOC, but also this version for the handbook is also a focus on games that support social and emotional learning. Now, this category of game is incredibly important and I think was really spotlighted during the recent COVID pandemic, where we saw lots and lots of young people across the world gaining comfort, uh, improving communication and making sure that they weren't, uh, you know, get, getting, lo getting lonely or, or having, being affected by mental health uh, using video games as a context for learning. Now, there's not a particular you know, category of game that we've included um, within, this, within this category because different games uh, are quite important, we think, for different aspects of social and emotional learning. But some of these games do tackle, you know, we think, some really quite difficult topics. 
So one of the games that we talk about is a game called What Remains of Edith Finch. And this is a game that's designed that can be used to help young people deal with loss, bereavement, intergenerational family trauma. We've got other games such as Sea of, sea of Solitude that we mention, uh, which is designed to think a little bit more about mental health. Uh, and then we've also talked a little bit in this section around esports, which is, of course, is a growing phenomenon across Europe and across the world, and how, if used in the right way, Ray, esports can be really, really good tools to talk about self-regulation, collaboration, uh, and, and different anger management. And these are just three of the games that we mentioned, you know, or have showcased within this section.